let's let's get to the video. Uh, this is explaining to you uh, real quickly what we what we're doing uh, across the country. So uh, if I get that video, the ABC video. Virginia Child reports James Cooley is using hard lessons to help those kids carve their own future. To understand just how far James Cooley has come, you have to know where he started. I was born the seventh of ten kids. My mother could not. I really wanted to take care of all of us. James was six. Because if we push 
If we're doing bad and, and, and whatever, we're going to push that into the next generation, and the next generation is going to, and let's push it into the next generation until someone is strong enough to kind of look and see where that push is coming from. That's a lot of things that we have going on in, in a lot of the inner cities around the nation is uh, we grew up in that environment, and that's the only way that we know things. And we continue to set bad examples for our kids, and we push the wrong thing forward. And then you have another generation of, of the same thing, another generation of the same thing. We have to be strong enough to look back. If it's not good, we're standing. Just like electricity, you gotta stop the generation curse. We have to stop it. We have to be strong enough because we want the next legacy to have a chance. We don't want a continuation, continuation, continuation. So that's the significance of that. And we have to be strong enough now to stop that or teach our kids strong enough to just, if it's not good, just take it, take it, stop it. Let the next generation go. Thank you, everybody. Next slide, please. That's a little bit, I'm not going to go off into that. That's a little bit about uh, my company, um, Aerospace Guy, Information Insurance. Next slide, please. This, this is what I'm here to talk to you about. This is uh, some of the things that we're doing across the nation. And uh, we're based out of uh, Temecula, California. But the primary purpose of the J.C. Cooley Foundation is to provide life skills. Uh, to our youth and young adults in the community because it takes the entire village to raise one kid. So everybody has to be involved in order for us to even give the next kid or next generation a chance. It's going to require everybody. Now, see, we've got a lot of leaders in here from the education, uh, uh, police force, the city council, and the leadership in here. It's going to require everybody, families, working together, coming up with the same ideas and the same plan. Not eight, nine different plans. It doesn't work that way. You scatter it all over. It doesn't work when you have too many things going on. Now, we also allow our kids to create their own environment. What I mean by that is their own environment and opening up, uh, telling you what's on their mind, uh, a lot of kids not going to tell parents, their family, what's, what's going on <clears throat> and in their mind. You have to put them in the right situation. And I, I, and I do this by using, I use the terminology. Uh, <laughs> sometimes our youth just want to be heard, right? So they, they come, they just want to be heard. They, they you know, so we, we have to uh, reverse our leadership <coughs> role. Sometimes it requires us just to be a listening ear. I mean, a chaplain, a pastor. Just listen. You know. Don't say anything. I mean, just listen because let them, them get it out. Sometimes we have to switch that role up and we have to be that coach. But you can do it. I mean, I, have you thought about doing it this way? I think we need to do, do it this way right here. And sometimes it requires tough love. You have to be the umpire. You're out! But it's a combination of all three leadership styles okay. that we have to handle very carefully Sit depending back. on okay. uh, who we're dealing with in our school system. So it's a blend of several different types of leadership styles. And we try to do that with our program. And you know, we believe in education, goals, goal setting. And let me tell you, the world sometimes teaches our youth that the only way that you're going to make it is you got to go to a four-year university, you got to do this, you got to go to, I mean, you got to go to college, you got to go to college, you, you got to, you, you don't have a college degree, that's, well, you know, I am pro-education, but I also know that every kid is not cut out to go to a four-year university. We got the technical schools out there. You need to guide them in that right direction. Or, you know, we got the military out there. If they, if they ain't ready for a four-year university, or if they're not ready for 
a vocation school to down to something. We want our kids doing something. And it's up to us as mentors and leaders to understand the personality, uh, understand what's going on in their head, and provide that type of direction. Uh, if you don't have it, you, you direct them to somebody with that type of skill set. So it's a blend of everything. But, you know, it's just a, a means of helping cause change. And I tell you, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It takes time. Yeah, so our program is geared toward, you know, personal mentorship, uh, speaking, getting kids up to, to really say what's on their mind. You have kids that never talked before, afraid of them. Next thing you know, you get them up there, get them open, you find out that that's, that kid is, is natural. That kid, you just discover something in that kid, then other kids are going to want to follow suit. I mean, so it's all about being involved, being a part of, being a part of that village. To raise one kid. Yeah, I missed like the first five minutes. want to try to reach them all. But it's he didn't have enough juice then. Now I'm talking to the pastor. I mean, and he's getting, the pastor getting ready to head off to the Air Force. And you know, I spent 23 years in the Navy. And, and one thing that he and I thought, I said, you're not going to reach everybody. But you know, you go out there with a, with a clean heart. And you go out there speaking the truth. You're going out there being the, the mentor. You're going to have some followers that are going to want to be like you. Uh, they're going to say, hey, whatever, whatever he's doing, let me try to get over there and get some of that advice. Next slide, please. This is an agenda. Now, we're not going to hit everything on here. But I think it's important that uh, we cover a few topics on here, especially the 87 10 3. 8, 7, 10, 3, uh, if you add that up, that equals what? Uh, 100. 100, right? Percentage-wise. So, let's go to the next slide, please. 87, 10, 3, that's the population of the world. Population of the world. And it's broken down just like that. If we went and did a random or 10 folks anywhere, the percentage is going to fall out the same way. And we went out and did a picked out 100 folks. The percentage are going to fall out the same way. A thousand, a million, a billion, they're going to fall out. 87% 87 of the world population, the world, is average, ordinary, and below. It's by design. If you don't believe it's by design, that's what government is. It's by design. Because somebody got to do the work. Everybody cannot be, well, we can, but they want to dumb us down. You know, so 87% of the world population is average, ordinary, and below. And they would do anything that their boss tell them to do without asking any questions, but then grumble about it. You know, if you told 87% uh, of them, I want you to take that chair, walk around the building three times, I want you to bring the chair back and put it over here. You grab that chair, they're not going to ask any questions. They're going to do it. They're going to walk around and they're going to look at it. Well, I've got two more hours. <laughs> two, if I walk slow, I've got two more hours. And they'll bring it around and they'll put it there. Won't ask any questions because the only thing they think about is a job. <laughs> a job, you know, just. You know what job stands for? Anybody know what job stands for? Anybody? Anybody want to test? Try. Job stands for just over broke. My, 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 my. Just over broke. My, my, my. The system set us up where they give us enough money to pay for our rent, mm. pay your car note, get a little food. Maybe put a hundred dollars away a month. Mm. Job. And most of us go from job to job to job and it's interchangeable. I'm on a 7-Eleven. Not, nothing. There's nothing bad about this. Uh, I don't like this, so I'm quick. I'm, I'm at Walmart. Uh, I don't like this. 
I'm going to quit reading. I'm, I'm at McDonald's job. We have to get our kids to focus on careers. Amen. Careers. As I mentioned earlier, we're not going to reach everybody, but we're going to try to. So 87% average or error and below. 10%. A lot of people look at 10 percenters and say, oh, they bust the system. Uh, they, they, they want to fight you on everything. They, they want to do this. You, you know what? I started out as a 10 percenter. And if I did not understand something, I would ask the question, why? Now, growing up, I mean, everybody know growing up, you ask your mom and dad and anybody, why? Because I said so. Boy, you better not be asking me no question. You better go and do it. And we still do that today. That's not right. If you don't know why you're doing something, you ask politely and respectfully. Why? <laughs> and we have to be strong enough, parents, leaders, etc., to be able to back off that pride and say, oh, okay, this is the reason why you're doing this. You would have to turn it into a learning experience. Yeah, you got to teach more. But I'll come back to 10%. 3% of the world was born. Whoever had the gold rules, right? They born in wealth. They're born with, you know, mommy, daddy, I mean, just uh, step up. Uh, you know, they, they, are, they never failed before, so they don't know what success really tastes like. They think that they're successful. So, but then sometimes three percenters, by the way, I consider myself a three percenter, comes from the ten percent. Ten percent is a good place to be, a story. It is because uh, anybody ever heard of Mark Zuckerberg? I mean, uh, yeah. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Talking about him. Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. He's the inventor of Facebook. Yeah. Now, Mark Zuckerberg was born. Well, he was born wealthy. He was born wealthy. 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 Uh, well, I said math. If you're an engineer, you, you know that it's a mathematical equation. Everything is based on numbers. <laughs> it's like a book of numbers. Everything is based on numbers. Everything we do is based on numbers. He came up with this algorithm that will allow you to watch social media or anything in real time. It used to be if news happened, you didn't get it until the next day, or sometimes two days later. But well, he invented this algorithm where you can actually see it happening right now. You get boom. <laughs> and he went to the powers to be and said, I got this great idea. Yeah, I got this great idea. And uh, I want to I introduce it to you. So he, he talked about it. The boy, I get, get out of here. You know, that, that ain't going to never work. So he went back to Harvard, back to his campus room. And he met 13 other folks and he convinced them, he said, I got this, 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 this. Oh, and this is my plan, this is what I'm thinking about. How many are you all in? He convinced them. So I called 14 of them and said, hey, 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 count me in. So they took this idea and they collaborated, worked together, and perfected it even more. He came back 20 months later with a full developed algorithm to the powers of be, and said, hey, I, this, did I tell you to get that one never going to work? He said, I want to demonstrate this. I got eight countries scattered all over, China, Korea, Japan, this, that, this, that, Spain. Put the over Japan, are you there? Yes, I am. Live time, real time. Korea, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am all countries. Wow, we want to buy the whole thing right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's see if you have to offer it. Have to offer it. Became 
$30 billion rich overnight. Billion, I ain't submitting. Overnight. Just because he, didn't, he went back, he kept asking the question why uh, to the other folks and they developed this skill set. And he sold that. Guess which percentage he went to? Three. Three. Three? Who said three? Anybody else? He went to, okay, he floated past the three by 27 years, all the way up. He went to the top one or one or one or one or one or one percent. The fifth richest man in the world today. My point is, as a temple center, you can come from the temple center and still make it to the group center. You take it down but down. you have to get away from the confrontation. Uh, there is nothing wrong with asking why. You know, you, 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 they, they ask you to do something, and your boss asks you to do something. Uh, but if you get constantly said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Why? Why should I do that? If you if you question authority over and over, all you have to do is just ask why they should tell you. And say, so what's the primary purpose? So I want this chair. What, what's, what's the end result? I want this chair. I want it there. <laughs> Boom. You just cut out, you know, about a hundred different steps. Because you ask the question, what, what is the end result? And that's what we have to get our youth to understand. So when they come to you, asking you, why? Let's push back on the pride. Let's explain to them in the educational philosophy perspective what we want to, them to achieve. Next slide, please. Now, we talked about this song a few minutes ago. I said my program is based on the four C's. And the four C's are create, mm -hmm. collaborate, mm -hmm. commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. confidence. Commit with confidence in everything that you do. Create ideas, ideas that we can see in the back of our mind. We all have these ideas that, that are back in our minds. We might not be able to see it with the physical eyes, but if you can see it here, you can do it. If you can see it here, you can do it regardless of what anybody might tell you. You can't do that? Well, I guess I just quit. I can't get told me I can't do it. That's 87%. If you can see it here, you can do it. The second C is collaborate. You got these ideas here. And you talk to others about them. You find out that, wow, they were thinking the same way that I was thinking.